Okay, let's start. Okay, uh, last time, um, last time we talked about uh, the proof of uh, uh, theory and uh, and also the Markov. Uh, let's just uh, um, recall uh, basic definitions uh, used in Markov. Um, can you see my screen or share screen? So now you can see that. Uh, I just briefly recall uh, what we did last time. Okay. So, uh, so to to say, right? We know Markov property for Markov chain uh, very well. So now we are considering a continuous in time uh, Brownian motion. This Brownian motion is a continuous uh, Markov chain. You can think it's a Markov chain. So uh, the intuitive idea is very easy, right? You just look at the increment, uh, which should be independent of the history, right? everything you know before, uh, before time uh, s. But we want to make this rigorous, right? So we should uh, make it precise. What's the, what is the information before time s? So, so very natural idea, right, is just uh, fs0. If you compare to the discrete time, uh, this is a natural choice. This is just the every Brownian motion or every pass up to time s. Um, but uh, from the beginning, it really, uh, it's not very easy to to start from this. So we're actually using some uh, larger sigma field uh, we call fs uh, plus. So fs plus actually is the intersection of all future, right? Not not. Uh, so it's the intersection of all ft naught, uh, ft zero for t is bigger, bigger than s. So of course this fs plus is bigger than uh, fs zero, uh, is the all the information up to s. Uh, later you see right, so these two um, uh, are actually the same. So this, uh, these two sigma field are equal to each other up to a null set, right? almost a surely right? in probability sense, uh, the other set. Okay. Um, so we also define the shift, uh, the random shift. So here it's not random. Uh, we will define random shift. So here it's just a fixed shift. So S is a time. So S is a time. So we shift uh, the path uh, to to S. Right. So we shift to the left. So this is. Uh, uh, the original path, right? So this is the original path. We just cut and time s, and now we're starting from uh, time s. So this become time zero. So this become time zero. So it's the shift map. And so Markov property can be stated using this shift map, given a uh, only the function uh, y, so which is uh, also measurable. Um, we can so we can, if y is shifted, uh, it's composed with the sh right, you just shift y. Uh, then we take the conditional expectation up to the information and time s. So then we just get uh, this uh, a, a random variable. Right? This is not uh, if we fix this z and uh, and uh, and uh, starting point z. Uh, this is really a number. And this number z is in the ps, right? So this is random variable, which is uh, fs0 measurable. Okay. Um, so the statement looks uh, almost the same as uh, in the Markov chain, right? The proof is also the same, uh, but uh, it is a little more delicate because now we are treating uh, infinite. So it's not just countable time, right? It's infinite time. Uh, uh, of course, it's infinite. It's a uh, continuum time, right? T is in R. Okay. Uh, so this is a Markov property. Um, so you shift. If you shift uh, to time s, right? Um, so condition to the information of time s, then you just uh, 
So what do you get? It's the, oh, you, you just restarting and time BS, right? Uh, so this really tells you the condition to all the history uh, up to time s. What really matters is the location and time s, right? So what really matters is just the BS. Uh, the history, right, the, the, the information before s really does not matter. Right? This is more core property. Okay. Uh, so we also mentioned like several corollary, right, in particular, right, this, uh, this theory. So given any uh, bounded uh, measurable function z, uh, so if we take an expectation, conditional expectation with respect to fs plus and uh, with respect to fs zero, right, so they are the same. Uh, so actually this tells you almost, uh, so these two sigma field are more or less the same. Right? Actually these uh, two sigma field are the same uh, up to a uh, null set. So you can see more clearly right, is in this uh, discussion. So if Z is measurable, is FS not measurable, and you can also show Z is FS zero measurable, and vice versa, right? Because this is smaller, right? FS zero is smaller. If Z is FS zero measurable, of course, Z is FS plus measurable, and the virus this discussion. So, uh, so we can just uh, treat uh, these two sigma field and uh, the same field. Okay. So we will uh, just uh, mention uh, the proof, exam check the proof of blue menso zero one law. Uh, so this zero one law basically say the following. Uh, so the, the initial sigma field or uh, called term field, uh, sigma field, so F zero plus is trivial. Uh, so if you take any uh, measurable set uh, in this uh, F0 plus, it either has mirror zero or, or mirror one, probably mirror one. Um, the proof, I, I, I can just uh, tell you, just to uh, go briefly uh, the proof, so you can recall uh, what we learned in last uh, class. So first, right, F0, zero, zero is uh, absolutely, right, is, uh, is of course, right, uh, trivial, right? Uh, and so why it's trivial? It, it, because by our construction of Px, right? Px is a probability mirror on the uh, trajectory space. And so if right, we, we can, uh, so if Px, right, we want to compute Px e, so e is a Borea set. Okay, it's just a zero time since, right? If this set contains x, right, so it has full probability, right, and one is equals one, otherwise it's zero, right? So F zero, zero, of course, uh, is a, a trivial sigma field, right? So by previous turn, right, if we choose a, a set A, right, if we choose a set A in this uh, germ sigma field, right, so then uh, we take the conditional expect, right, with respect to F zero, right? So of course it's itself, right? Because A is uh, F zero plus measurable, right? So it's just a conditional expectation, definition conditional expectation. Uh, by a previous theory, right, we know, um, so the conditional expectation are the same, agree with each other, right? So, so for any function, right, if you take a, a if you project to this sigma field and this field, they are the same. So, uh, but uh, what does this mean, right? This really means the, the probability, right? It really means the probability of, um, of A, right? Because this is trivial sigma field, right? So the, so the conditional expectation is just uh, expectation, right? So it should equals to the uh, probability. Right? So this, right? So this is indicator function. So the probability it is, it, it either equals to one or it is equal or it uh, it is zero, right? Um, so uh, called Blue zero one law, right? Basically says uh, germ uh, a sigma field is trivial. Right? The proof is exactly in the previous theory. Okay, so last time we up here, right? Uh, yeah, last time we uh, yeah we stop uh, not here we stop here. Last time we um. Okay, uh, let's maybe just go very quickly about the local behavior. Okay. So then we can stop, we can start on time behavior. Okay, local, local behavior. So first example, right. 
So let's define a uh, heating time. So this is heating time. We have found the stopping time uh, for brown emotion, but we will define uh, shortly. So tau here is a uh, so tau is a uh, heating time. So which well, it can from the definition, which means uh, it's the first time uh, Bt is bigger than zero, right? So the first time the brown emotion hitting positive axis. And so the theory, the theory says um, probably one tau should equal to zero, right? Um, I mean, of course, right? Of course, tau is, uh, uh, so here tau equals zero means the following. Uh, tau equals me zero means, okay, there are infinite, uh, so here is zero, the infinite time Tn, right, Tn plus one. So there, there is a sequence of time. So, and this time goes to zero such that Btn bigger than zero. So this is what uh, tau uh, equal means. The theory means almost truly, almost truly, right, you, you take uh, almost uh, 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 any or uh, surely probably since surely trajectory, uh, you, you just look at the trajectory. Right? So for those omega, you can always find a uh, vanishing sequence of time t uh, such that uh, btn omega is always bigger than one, a bit bigger than zero, right? So this is what uh, this here says, right? Uh, it does not mean b0 equals zero, right? B0, uh, b0 bigger than zero. B0 but we we starting from B zero. B zero is, is always zero. So what what uh, this theory says is this fact: for typical trajectory omega, we can always find a vanishing sequence T n, right? Uh, such that B T n omega is always bigger than zero. So this this is the theory. the proof is almost a pure blue main so one law. Right? So we can just use main so zero one law. Uh, so how to do that, right? Uh, so we just uh, note the following, right? So if tau, the stopping time is t, uh, should contain the event bt bigger than zero. Right? If bt is bigger than zero, right? So, so we know tau each time it is positive, right? If bt is uh, bigger than zero, right? Then means tau should be less than or equal to t, right? So this is trivial by definition, but we know uh, motion, so is the normal distribution. Right? Fixed time t, bt is a normal distribution uh, with mean zero and variance t. So if you just compute the probability bt is equal to zero, so it's one half, right? By symmetry, it's one half. And uh, this observation, right? So this observation is true for all t, for all t. So uh, we can send t goes to zero and recover the probability of this event, the limit event, which also be then one half. Right? So, but this event is in the trivial sigma field. So the probability should be either zero or one. Right? So it's bigger than one half. So probability must be one. Proof is very easy, but uh, it gives you uh, a way to say something for sure, right? Uh, uh, so for this theory, we know, right? We know, uh, intuitively know, they should be true, right? Because if you think uh, from motion as as a scaling limit of random work, um, right? You, you, you can't think right, they should be true, right? Uh, if you, you must, there, there must be like infinite time, uh, eight, is right, or hitting positive or negative part. Right. So this is a corollary. You can so the theory says right. Theory says the brown emotion his hit uh, positive part infinite uh, immediately right, immediately, and uh, by it must hit immediately right. And all we know right. So. Uh, the brown emotion almost surely, right, almost surely trajectory is continuous. So uh, if T zero is the heating time and right, the heating time and zero, right? So 
So and time t zero, t zero stop in time, t and stop in time t zero, so be t equals zero. And uh, since this is minimum, right, and also by the previous two operation, right, so hitting positive part immediately, hitting negative part immediately, and the trajectory is continuous. So it must hit zero immediately. Um, okay, uh, this is a very uh, straightforward observation. Okay. So last time we actually stop here, right? We stop here. Um, so, so how to use the Pumenso zero one law to say some something about the brown motion? If you send the time goes to infinite, or you want to know the behavior, time goes to infinity. Right? Also, we call it long time behavior. Right? Long time behavior. Long time behavior. Uh, if you have questions, you just uh, uh, just uh, say uh, use this way because it can be a little bit fast. So otherwise, I cannot finish uh, finish all the materials I want to recover. Uh, since we are recording, uh, if there's some not very clear, uh, you can always go back to check that. Right? You can ask me questions uh, as well. Okay. So we are uh, if I write uh, everything uh, from scratch, uh, it will waste uh, a lot of time. And uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so so let, let's talk uh, about the long time behavior, right? So a uh, first uh, observation is the following. Right? So BT, right? Let's say BT is a brown motion, right? T bigger than zero. So now actually from BT, we can reverse time, right? So we want to know right, what, what, what's the behavior of this, right? I mean, maybe this doesn't, right? This actually doesn't make sense, but we might scale that, right? The, the observation is this, right? So if you choose zero equal, we define a new a brown motion. So this new brown motion right, is defined in this way, right? We, we take the reciprocal of time. We take one over t, right? We take one over t as a new time. So one over t is a new time, and we scale by t. So so this is a new brown motion. It is a new brown motion. Uh, so and also, right in the, the as I said last time, right. So uh, in the distribution sense, right. So this is the, this is same, right. So x t the new brown motion uh, by reverse the time, right. But uh, the reverse is not is like one over t, right. And scale t time uh, and then multiply by t, right. So you get a new brown motion, right. Uh, so this new brown motion, right? If you send t goes to zero of x t, so this actually uh, it equals to if you send uh, this t goes to infinite, right? Right. So the, the behavior of the new brown motion x t and zero, right, near zero, uh, is the same as the original brown motion when you send t go infinite. Okay, and it's very easy to check. Uh, this x t is real on motion, right? Um, I I won't check the the point and the second point. Right? This is very straightforward. You can just uh, uh, go through the notes. Uh, actually, using the second definition of brown motion. Uh, in your last uh, homework, I let you to check right, the brown, uh, definitions of brown motion in the textbook uh, equivalent to each other. So we just the second second definition. Uh, I won't take the first one. Uh, first the two two uh, two def two conditions right. They are almost trivial right. Uh, so for instance, take a uh, uh, take a n time slice right. So the the random variable you get are Gaussian. Right? Of course, they are Gaussian, right? Because it's just you take finite slice of times. Uh, is is uh, is just you take finite of original Brown motion, but it scales a little bit, right? But it scales a little bit. Of course, this is Gaussian, right? This is Gaussian. 
And uh, the second assumption, of course, is true, right? It has mean zero and it has this property and this property. Right? This is very true. Uh, what we need to say, right, more uh, is just the continuity. Okay. So what is continuity, right? Continuity is also trivial as long as it's not zero, right? So, so xt, right, xt is defined by the multiplication and the reverse in time, right? So this is continuous, right? So this is continuous, multiplication is also continuous, right? Uh, the new function we get should also be continuous as long as t is not zero, right? So what we need to say is the behavior at t equals zero, right? So which is exactly, uh, we need to show right, x t goes to zero right, because we define x zero and zero. So we need to say x t converts to zero as t goes to zero, almost surely, right? Uh, so as I said, right, this is just a, a strong law or large number, right? Uh, but uh, not really, because this t is any t, right? It's not just a one, right? it's any t. So we need to like uh, connecting uh, the, 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 the intermediate times. Okay, um, so this page is give you the proof, right? So, so let's say, right? So as I said, right, so x t equals to t x uh, one, uh, sorry, According to definition, okay, according to definition, so x equals to t b one over t. So show this convert to zero and the t to zero. So it's very easy to show the following. It's very easy to show. Uh, let's choose uh, t equals to one over n. So if it equals to one, right? So now x one over n equals to Hmm. equals to b n over n. Right? So this converts to zero almost it's easy. Right? So why is it easy? Right? It's just a strong law of a large number. Okay. So for for uh, for one pass, right, for if t n, right, t n equals to one n, so I'm the prince, but uh, we need connecting all the connecting all. Uh, for this particular case, right, uh, it works to zero by strong law large number, right? So because we can write Bn, we can write Bn as the sum of P1, right, P2 minus B1, and Bn minus Bn minus one. And the increment are Iid. Right? So those are increment, and those increment are, so they are independent, and the set distribution, uh, actually the distribution is just uh, the standard normal distribution. So of course, right, if you send n goes to infinity, uh, by strong law of large number, we have converts. This part is easy. But we need to show uh, we need to show the following, right? We need to show B T over T all goes to zero as T goes to infinity, right? So we need to show the following. We need to show the following uh, as T goes to infinity, right? So how to do that, right? Uh, so we just uh, use uh, maximum inequality. So this is a very useful tool if you want to pass from the let's say integer points to uh, other intervals, right? Uh, you can see, right? There are a lot of crucial tools that do form uh, growth. Uh, yeah. So. So the story, the, the inequality is said the following, right? When we're talking about Dubs inequality, right? In Martingales, we put this uh, again uh, using Dubs inequality. Uh, so what's the inequality says? The inequality says if we have a ID sequence, right? So it's just a random, right? You can think uh, XI is IID, so SN is just a random, uh, has mean zero, right? Mean zero. And a finite variance, finite variance. Okay. Uh, so in this case, uh, we can estimate the maximum value of S K, right? So we we get the maximum value of random work, and we can estimate this. Uh, we, this is uh, like in the form of Chebyshev inequality, right? But this is a stronger form of Chebyshev inequality, right? 
So in, according to the the like variance and the endpoint right time n, we can control right the maximal value. We can not just control the, uh, control the endpoint, but we control the end uh, the the maximal value of the whole pass right of the pass up to time n. So that's why it's useful, right? Because we are not only control for uh, one point, right? We control the whole trajectory. Right? That's very useful. So in particular, in our case, right? Uh, so we do like the following, right? We do the like following. Uh, so, so we can estimate this uh, easily, right? So this is, uh, okay, so this is N, right? This is N, and uh, this is N plus one. So we devise uh, this uh, path to be like very small sub intervals, right? So sub interval has the length like uh, one over two to n. Right? So this does not depend on m, right? So for each, m. so for each, m. so this estimate uh, is good, uh, very good, because uh, this estimate does not depend on m. Right? Uh, so this is the the increment, right? In a uh, interval, right, in a very small interval, and uh, we can send this uh, length of the small interval right, to, to zero, right, the length to, to zero. Okay, uh, so the, this star, right, star, the estimated star is just uh, uh, the previous uh, from of maximum unity applied to Brownian, uh, not Brownian motion, right, applied to, uh, to the Brownian motion, uh, so you can think, right, so this uh, for the increment in each sub-interval is xi, right, so each increment is the uh, xi, and uh, so this will vary, so, so from this case n, so sn, so the brown motion, right, so this is time zero, right, this is and time one, right, for instance, right. Uh, so, so the variance right, term, variance term is given by the whole variance uh, in uh, in this time interval. Right? Um, so, of course, right. So, b n plus one minus b n has standard normal distribution, and we can just compute this. Stuff, right? So, this gives us the the uniform uh, estimate. So, this is u. Right? This is u and n. Okay. So, if you send m goes to uh, infinite, right, we have the estimate uh, for the continuous uh, path, right? So this is a very, uh, very good tool. Right? So we can get the, uh, we can get the uniform estimate uh, for the path, for the path between n and n plus one. Okay, and um, so this is just one estimate, right? This says, right, in the past, right, uh, for n between n plus one, we can control uh, and control the pass um, the deviation from uh, time n uniformly uh, uniformly and, and so since this is uh, integral this is summable right sum uh, with n right? so this is summable so we can apply a um, uh, first Bourier candy lemma uh, we call this a because this event a so uh, if you sum up uh, the p is finite, right? So uh, so n appears infinite often with probability zero. Right? So so with probability zero, this inequality is true. So you also say almost surely, right? So we have the estimate. Almost should have estimate uh, like u, right? u minus bn less than or equal to n to uh, with probability uh, almost truly probability these are true as long as n is uh, large enough one n large enough one n large enough so we can just show bu over u Zero, almost surely, right? So the following is the uh, by using triangle inequality, right? Uh, this part, this part converts to zero because this actually is smaller than over n, right? We know n over n converts to zero by strong law or larger number, and this part uh, we just using the estimate. 
just using the estimate here. And mu here is in the order of n, and the dif distance between bu and n is, uh, is in the order of n to two. So this is at large is n minus one over third. Okay, so, so we have this. Uh, yeah, you, you can detail the, the proof, but uh, that's clear, right? So the crucial part actually is this. Sorry. So the crucial part actually is this, right? Is this. We're using uh, Kromorov maximal inequality, and we can get the uh, uniform control right, uh, on, on each time interval. On each interval. Any questions? No. Okay. Okay. So you know, I, I will just go next. But um, so this, this uh, is a very easy operation. Okay. Uh, so let's. Uh, 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 uh. So can you let's show okay. Um, so by the previous observation, uh, we can use the blue Mansell theory uh, to we can use blue Mansell theory uh, the zero one law to get the information about the limit behavior and uh, as it goes to infinite. Okay. Uh, so here uh, I will just state several. I will go quickly here. So F T. So T prime is a future information. So it's all the B uh, for S is bigger than T. Okay. So tau, right, tau is the, uh, the sigma field, right? We take the intercept of all the future uh, sigma field. So tau actually only depends on, de depends on the future, right? So it, tau doesn't depend on uh, several terms. So tau actually, so the theory says, the for so, so that means uh, for any set uh, is tolerable, so it either has probably zero or probability one. So actually, this result is stronger than Blue Mansell's result. So why? Uh, because here, so x it doesn't be, depend on x, right? So here it doesn't be depends on x. So for Blue Mansell result, it actually depends on the choice of x. But here it not, so so it, you're starting from some point, uh, so and you 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 take the sigma field that tell you actually the initial point you're starting from is not really relevant. Uh, and I'm not uh, the proof is uh, very difficult. Um, but, uh, what I to emphasize is the following, right? Uh, is just the x is arbitrary. Right? So no matter which point you are starting from, right? so so this uh, so so no matter what uh, b x b zero is, right? So your tall sigma field uh, always the same. So this makes sense, right uh, because the first uh, terms right. So usually you limit behavior are uh, relevant. Uh, so no matter what you are coming from, uh, so it's not really, uh, it's not really matters, right? So if, if, if you keep doing, right, if, if you spend time, it goes to infinite. Okay. Proof A is very nice, right? So you can, you can, you can read the proof, uh, but uh, I, I will just uh, skip that. Uh, the following is maybe more easy to, to, to see. Uh, is in, 
So B is a one-dimensional brown emotion, a one-dimensional brown emotion, and B0 equals to zero. Uh, in this case, if you send T goes to infinity, uh, actually uh, BT over square root of T goes to infinity. And BT over square root of T, if you take the inner limit, is minus infinity. Uh, so before we prove this, right, so what does this say, right? So it says, right, so actually if t goes to infinity, right, so it can go to positive part infinite open and go to negative part infinite open. Right? It's like oscillating infinite open, right? Uh, uh, yeah, this, this is, uh, so this, the similar version, the counterpart for the Brown emotion or just the sum, of a normal distribution, actually we see this similar result before, right? Even in the first semester. Um, and maybe let's just put this, then uh, we give you several corollary, right? So the first observation is the following. Uh, I will just give you the result uh, to save some time. So the result is following, just this result. Um, so, so this is the, the upper limit set of the sequence n, right? Uh, so this is just, uh, you take probability first and then take the upper limit, right? Uh, I claim, right, so this is true. And uh, this kind of reverse Fatou. This is not a Fatou lemma, but uh, you can this uh, from Fatou. Uh, but what I want to say is this, right? The upper limit set, right? So this is defined, so it's just this, it's uh, an, appears infinite often. Uh, so actually, um, so in set theory, right, this is defined as the following. So this is defined as the following. So an, the upper limit set is defined as this. So a, a, a appears infinite often. Uh, you can prove this uh, by far too, right? So, so, so here actually I give you the, the proof, right? give you the proof. Uh, by, by observe the following, right? So that's why uh, it is a far too, right? Why it's far too? Because uh, we can write the ability as an uh, expectation of some function, right? So then, but anyway, we use this uh, reverse far too. Uh, so the upper limit here, right? Upper here is bounded from below by the limit suit of the probability. So you use this, right? So we can easily conclude. Okay, so let's, uh, for, let's choose any k, let's choose any fixed number k, and we want to compute the probability of this uh, event. So over to n uh, bigger than k appears infinite open, right? So here is upper limit set. So, so this gives you like upper limit set of this, right, bn over square root n bigger than k, okay. Uh, so use a reverse far two, right, so we can put uh, the limb soup out, right. So then we just zero, right, this, uh, this probability, right. Uh, by scaling a relation, so here we're using scaling relation. Uh, so last time I, I kind of uh, said something wrong, right? So this scaling actually is a parabolic scaling. Right? It's a, 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 you should call it a parabolic scaling. Uh, but uh, you can you can just uh, say it's a, a Brownian scaling. Right? Brownian scaling. So which says right? So B S T right uh, for S bigger than zero. So in distribution sense, it equals to square root of T B S, S bigger than zero, right? So we can scale, right? We can scale, right? We can choose here T uh, as N. So B N than K over square root of N is just equals to this. They have the distribution, so the probability is the same. So uh, here it's not really demisual, right? Because each term is really uh, the same. So it's constant sequence, right? So of course the limit or the limb soup is just uh, equals to each term, right? Each term is just uh, this. And which is positive, right? Which is positive. Well, of course it's positive, right? Because you can compute them, right? It's a positive number. Uh, just using a density function of standard normal distribution. 
And so, but we know, right, this event, right, this event uh, is in the tail event, right, is in the tail sigma field. So by previous uh, uh, theory, right, the, the, the tail, tail sigma field is trivial. And uh, so a uh, positive event has probability one, right, the positive event has probability one. So what does this mean, right? So this means if you send t goes to infinity, right? So you should get uh, the limb soup should be infinity, right? So since k is arbitrary, right? k can be as large as possible. So k can be uh, as large as possible, no matter what k you choose, right? The, uh, almost surely, right? You can you can beat that. Right? So so you take a uh, limb soup, you can get infinity. also right? You can just uh, uh, take minus b. So if you just take B minus T, it's also brown motion, right? It's also brown motion. It also has the same distribution, right? It's just because normal distribution is symmetric around zero, right? It's symmetric around zero. So so we can get the limit. Right? So uh, the limit equals positive infinity, the limit equals to the minus infinity, right? And also we know, right? So we also we also know right almost surely B T uh, T than zero is continuous right since uh, motion is continuous almost surely so T should visit zero infinite infinite times right so that's what we said right that's the theory uh, this theory says right so if B T is brown motion so what is event A is defined as the t visitor zero infinite often, infinite often, right? So A is just the event, uh, the brown motion hit zero infinite often. And uh, from the previous uh, theory, right, because it visit a positive part and it is minus, part, uh, minus infinity, right? It must visit a zero because the paths are continuous. Uh, so we can say, right? We can we can just uh, say, right? One D brown motion right, is current, right? Uh, uh, starting from any point B X, right? But by, by translation inverse, right? You can shift uh, the starting point a little bit. So brown motion returns to zero infinite open, infinite open. And no matter how small, uh, no matter how small the time scale is, so the brown motion returns to the infinite, just uh, you send t goes to infinity, right? If you just restrict uh, from time square zero one, this this is true, right? this is true. But uh, but but uh, you should uh, starting from zero or something, right? Otherwise, it's not right. Okay. Um, okay. Starting from any point x, right? B t returns to zero infinite open, right? So there exists a Tn goes to infinity, right? So Btn goes to equal to zero. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, restrict to time scale, right? If you restrict from zero to one, you be careful, right? Uh, we will discuss uh, uh, some of that later, right? So the famous Arcsine law. So the last visit, right, before one, right, for instance, there's some. Uh, yeah, I should be careful, right? But uh, yeah, so here is just uh, limited behavior. Right? We send t goes to infinity. Uh, yeah, I, I, so before we end the discussion in this uh, section, so let's just uh, say a little by sigma few, right? As, uh, as we said in the very beginning, so fs plus right, equals to fs zero up to a now set, up to a now set. So, uh, so if you put all the now set there, n, n x is all the set a which is contained uh, in the in the uh, now sets, right? which are contained in the now set, the probability zero set. Uh, so this is kind of doing the completion. Right? So we put uh, f s uh, plus there, and we take the union with uh, uh, with all the mirror zero set. So this is kind of the completion. Uh, so if you learn some mirror theory, so this is a kind of completion. So for instance, the big mirror, so when we construct, construct the big mirror, so the big 
uh, there's the big marble set. The big marble set you can think as a barrier marble set and do uh, some closure. Right? So you put all the uh, not marble that can contain in a barrier set, but has but 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 has mirror zero there, right? So this is the big is kind of completion or barrier. Here we just put all the uh, all the set which are contained in 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 a set D which has probably zero. So then we we want the sigma field we are considering does not really depends on x. So here this depends on x, the initial point we're starting from. So if you take the union, uh, sorry, if you take the uh, intersection over all possible initial point x, right? So this is you. This is still a sigma field, but this sigma field does not depend on the initial step. Right? So uh, we usually just uh, usually we just uh, say this fs. So we just say this. We just are using fs as the sigma field we use. Right. So right instead of using this or that. Right? So this is like a complete. Right. This is the completion uh, sigma field. Which does not depend on the initial uh, initial set. Okay, so it's just uh, some confirmation. Uh, before we move to the next uh, uh, next uh, section. Okay. Um, yeah. If no, I will just uh, um, go to next uh, section. Yeah, I probably cannot finish all, right? So we have two tutorials. So um, since we already used the uh, stopping time many times, uh, we can do a little bit quick um, here. So it's stopping time, but uh, continues. So continuous stopping time, right? So uh, before, uh, so. So for discrete uh, continuous time, right? So when we define discrete uh, stopping time, uh, we use this uh, condition, right? So, uh, so the stopping time equals to n, right? So it's mirable, right? So this set uh, is mirable, is f n mirable, right? So this is the information uh, usually generating by x one, x zero, x one, right? So in the random wolf setting, right, or Martingale setting, right, f is generating by first uh, n terms and random variables. Here, right, so we want to uh, define stopping time, right, usually right, just for brown motion, right? Uh, it can be like for more general stochastic process with continuous in time, but here it's just a brown motion. So s is uh, s is the random variable. The real real value, uh, and as the this sublevel set is uh, less than t is f t variable, we call s is the stopping time. Okay, uh, it, it looks the same. Right? Uh, it, it looks different. Right? It looks different. Right? Why it looks different? Right here is n less than n equals to n. Right. So we can say right, this is equivalent to n is less than or equals to n, right, which is fn variable, right? Okay, so uh, if if we uh, if we make this consistent with the discrete stopping time, this should be uh, s less than t right, equals to ft. Right? Uh, but uh, usually, right, these two are equivalent as well. Uh, but this is not equivalent in for discrete uh, stopping times, right? So it's only uh, for continuous stopping time under these two assumptions. Right? So if f t is increasing, then that means if t is small, right? So f t is also small. Right? Also, t maps to f t is right continuous. Right? Then it means if you take the union, if you take the intersection for all s is bigger than t, it's just f t itself. If you're using this uh, right continuous and increasing property uh, definition here is equivalent to uh, this one. Okay, uh, usually, right, so 
the the filtration t satisfy those information satisfy those property like increasing and right continues uh, so we just uh, we can use this tool so we can use two definition right um, and, and and the same way right and, and like uh, we don't uh, really distinguish this definition and this definition they are equivalent okay uh, you, you can check all right why they are different so uh, it's a uh, very easy checking right? very easy checking Okay, so uh, so what what, what so what, what uh, we say here, right? So 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 here, right? You, you, if if this sub level set is FT mirable, this sub sub level set is uh, uh, is mirable, right? Up to time given, given and time t, and we say S is open time. Okay, so you can check those two uh, equivalent. Okay. Uh, so there are, there are several checking uh, in the following in the following notes, uh, but I I will skip most of them. You you can check those easily. They're uh, uh, they're not very difficult. Right? So for instance, right, uh, if G is the open set, right, if G is open set, uh, we define a stopping time, right? So you, we check it's a stopping time, but uh, it's really a stopping time. So it's the first time the brown motion uh, visit G. G is a set, right? So we call this heating time. We call this heating time of G. Uh, the theory is that as long as G is open, right, so T is a stopping time. Uh, I, I don't want to say all this. Uh, I can this uh, reading notes or textbook. Um, but uh, very generally, so as long as, uh, maybe it's banned to write here. So very generally, as long as, as long as uh, the set, uh, set for G, right, is Borea, uh, let's say in R, uh, the heating time is, uh, is a stopping time. And so all here discussion is very standard, right? In the in the mirror theoretic or the probability Y, uh, so you can do proof uh, very easily. So I will skip most of the, uh, but you can see sketch or proof or the full detail proof in the textbook. So what I want to say is, okay, if you just define a stopping time, so which is the hitting time of any Borea set. Uh, so you can just uh, use that, right? You can just uh, use the fact, okay, the heating time of a Borea set is a stopping time, right? So you can use all the theory regarding uh, time. Without, right? So the following is just, uh, is exactly the same conclusion which holds uh, for con uh, discrete stopping time, but for st uh, continuous stopping time, right? So if you take the, the minimal or two in time, right, you get a stopping time. You take the maximal, you get a stopping time. If you take the sum, right, you also get the stopping time, right? Uh, so it's very easy to check. Right? It's very easy to check. Okay. So also if the, the constant function is a stopping time. So so uh, so that's why if you take the, the if you take truncation right, uh, from above, if you take the truncation low. Uh, we just shift a uh, 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 stopping time. You still get a stopping time. So this is very easy to check. Uh, I put a one in the exercise. Uh, so you, you can use that as example. So the second, uh, the second result is the following, right? So we have a sequence. So if we have a sequence of stopping time, so you take the super, the super, the supreme of this sequence is a stopping time. The infimum the limit soup, the limit in of in time. And of course, if it has a limit, right, the limit uh, is also as a, is also a stopping time. But is that uh, easy to show? Um, maybe not. Okay. Uh, so again, right, so here's another example, right, the K is a closed set, right, the heating time is a stopping time. Uh, I want to show this as well. Um, so in the exercise, you, you can show the following, right? So if A is a F sigma set, 
So which means A is a countable union. So A is a countable union. Uh, a is a countable union of closed set, right? It's a countable union of closed set. Then the heat time is, uh, is a stopping time. And also, right, so if A is uh, the G delta set, right, G delta set is the intersection of all set, right? The A is all the same of A is the stopping time. So as I said, right, so I know if G is clear, the heating time of G is also stopping time. Okay. So, uh, I, I maybe I skip something. Right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I skip something. Uh, maybe the uh, go back this. Uh, a very inclusion show to show easily. So if T N is a stopping time and T N go uh, T T from above, T N converts to T from above, then T is a stopping time. So if Tn uh, is a monotone convergence to T, right? T goes from below and Tn approximate T, right? So Tn is a stopping time and Tn approximate T from below, right? Or above, right? So then T is a stopping time. We use two facts. Right? So we use two facts uh, a lot of times. Uh, these are very useful facts. Useful. Very useful, right? So if we can approximate a uh, uh, random variable t from above or from below uh, by in time, then t is uh, also a stopping time. Uh, the checking are all like uh, standard, right? Using theoretic uh, way. So I will skip. Or you can. Have... Okay. So this is uh, another theory. Uh, it's uh, easy to check as well. It's kind of some truncation of a stopping time. Uh, it's not a, like, like a, it's a truncation from above of the stopping time. So let's say if S is a stopping time, and we define Sn as the following, right? Uh, uh, so you, you said, okay, so this, this means you take the integer part. We take the integer part. Uh, so actually, what does this mean, right? So it means if as in this uh, this uh, interval, right? If s is between um, this small interval, so then s n is equal to the end point here, right? So s n actually is always so s n actually is always bigger than s, right? Uh, so the proof is uh, very easy. Uh, and Sn is not uh, equal to zero, right? So Sn is kind of approximation, to, but Sn is approximating S from above, right? So Sn is a sequence of, uh, of a stopping time which approximate S. Right? Right. This definition gives you a, uh, give you a stop time to approximate S from above. So, uh, so n is monotone decreasing, right? N is decreasing. Okay, so I, I just want to state uh, the strong Markov property with the uh, proof. Right? Uh, the proof is uh, hard, but hard, but uh, it's, uh, so it's hard to explain well. The strong Markov property. So to state the strong Markov property, we need to define a, a random shift, right? Because uh, so. So strong Markov property actually is just a Markov property, um, but uh, for but uh, like so strong Markov property is like a Markov property, but trajectory wise, right? So the shift of m is depends on the variable, right? So it's just s, right? This is the random shift. So to 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 state the strong Markov property, we need to define a random shift. S is a stopping time, or just so S here is stopping time, right? It's a stopping time. Uh, and so for this stopping time, we can define a random shift, uh, which is called uh, uh, theta S. Right? So for any S, right, for any finite uh, S, right, we just define, uh, we just shift the path uh, to the left 
for S time, right? So now we're just starting from here, right? Just starting from S, right? So we cut all the paths before S, right? So if S equals to infinite, right? So we add a special point, right? So you don't need to enter what, what, does it, what, what it is, right? So because most time we just focus on this part, uh, for the stopping time is uh, finite. Intuitively, the random shift is just uh, we cut off the part omega before s omega, and then shift uh, shift part and uh, uh, s omega becomes the time zero. Right? Uh, as I said, you don't need to really care by uh, this data. This is really not important. Okay. So FS, right, FS is the information generated by the time, stop, stopping time S, right? Uh, the definition is exactly the same as it did uh, in the discrete stopping time. So FS, uh, what, uh, what, what is the set, uh, in the sigma field S? Right? It's all the event A, so which if you intersect uh, with S less than T, right, which is FT measurable. So the, uh, the, the intuitive idea is just that, so if it's the part A, which is in S uh, uh, and T, right? So, so this should be FD variable, right? The slice of A, uh, which uh, is contained in the in the set as less than T, right? In this set, should be FT variable, right? So then all this type at A uh, generating uh, the information known at time S, right? So which is just FS. So. This is the information we know uh, and the time and the stopping time S, right? So S is varying as well, right? So this is different and uh, time T, right? So original uh, filtration, right? Sigma field FT, right? It's just, uh, if you take uh, the time, uh, is identical, right? It's just a T, right? Okay. Um, so there are several observations. Uh, I will just uh, state that uh, the checking is also easy. Right? So uh, we also checked this before. So if we have two stopping time S and T, right? If T is bigger, uh, uh, T is bigger than the filtration, right? Then the information up to time T is also bigger. It's also bigger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then, right, if we have a random variable t and approximate t from above, then the information f t, right, it just equals the section of the filtration. It's all of the sigma field, all the sigma field. But the proof is so standard, right? You don't is by mirror theoretical way. Uh, but uh, to know the 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 result is more important, right? Uh, you need to go through that, right? Um, okay, so uh, the following is just an observation, right? So B is a brown emotion, right? BS is the brown emotion composed with the stopping time. So the, this theory says the brown emotion composed with the stopping time is FS measurable. So to show this, we need to use the previous uh, theory, right? We need to, we need to use uh, this one. All of our observation, also, our observation here. Well, we the here give you a construction of approximation of S, right? Give you one approximation of S. Okay. Uh, but but I, I won't talk about proof, right? The proof is all like, uh, so so as I told you all in this segment, the proof is all meritocratic, right? So you can just take that. Um, with uh, discrete stopping time. Uh, maybe first lectures in this semester. Okay. Uh, so all, all, all you, you need to know is the following, right? So BS, right, is a new stopping, a new random variable, right? It's a real variable, right? It's really a random variable, right? So if S is just a constant T, right, so K is just a BT, right? It's the, the, it's the brown motion and time T. But now we take different slides, right? So S is, S is changing, right? S is changing. S is a stopping time. Uh, but anyway, BS, BS is also a random variable, right? So this random variable is FS measurable, right? It's FS measurable. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. BS is measurable with respect to the uh, inflation and time at and time. Yeah, the proof is very straightforward, right? Uh, but you need to make this clear, right? For instance, here, right? So why BS is measurable? So what we show is kind of, okay, for all the construction, for all the location, we know it's measurable. Right? But why, if you send angles to infinity, why is it uh, measurable? Right? You need to think, uh, so make this clear, you need to make this clear. Um, okay. But so so we can now we can just state the strong Markov property. Strong Markov property. So strong Markov property is just a Markov Markov property, right? But uh, for stopping time, right? A region shift is a uh, shift uh, uniform time, and now we shift uh, different time, right? For different trajectory, right? Maybe for first trajectory you uh, right? the second trajectory shift two. Right? Um, so that's, uh, this is a shift, okay, so this is a shift, right? Y S, so Y S uh, may be also changing, right? So maybe also changing, uh, or maybe also depends on stopping time, right? But it may, might not, uh, but anyway, so this is true. Uh, so what it says, right? For F S is an iterable function. So theta, uh, theta S is the uh, shift. And if you do the projection to the information to time uh, up to the stopping time s, right, up to the stopping time s, it just equals to, right, so what really matters is just the information of s, right? Um, so what does this right hand side mean, right? It just means, okay, fix x, and if fix t, right, you compute this, right, you get a, a function of two variables, x and t. So then you just take x equals to bx and t equals to s. So this is exactly the same. Uh, is not exactly the same, but a very similar to one uh, we did it uh, in the Markov chain, right? So it's exactly exactly the same. Okay. Um, okay. So in the proof, there are two two things we used. So first is the Markov process. Uh, so, uh, so, so brown motion, right? we already have the Markov, Markov property, right? So, and also uh, it's a continuous, where right? you fix the time t, and if you just send x to this, uh, this e, the expectation of a function f, right? So, uh, so then this is a continuous, right? It's called a failure, in, failure property. It's called a failure property. And uh, uh, so you can, you can find the, so do you, this is this is not a I mean it's not very old or or, 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 not, or not a new result. Uh, so 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 and uh, Yushi Kevich support this for general Markov process. So not just for brown motion. Uh, and this property or right, this continuity property is called a failure a failure property. Okay. Uh, so but the, what you need to know is the following. Right? It's right, so kind of a stopping time s, right? And you do the random shift, right? You do the random shift. So actually, you just uh, get so what get, right? You can then you condition to the uh, information up to time s, right? Then what you get is just uh, this, just to get this. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I don't, I have minutes, right? Ten minutes. Um, um, I will skip a lot, but I will talk about uh, one important uh, thing. So, uh, this is a past property in the section uh, 7.0. Uh, since we don't have time, um, I will skip a lot. Um, so, but uh, okay. So we need the uh, so we need this information. So t uh, t t t a right t a is the stopping time. It's a heating time. Uh, uh, and point A, the heating time. So this is a heating time and uh, point A. Right. Uh, first uh, theory says, right, uh, on the P0, uh, PA, right, for different A, so this is a family of random variable, right? So this is a family of random variable with different A. You can increase just, just A different, right? Uh, so this has stationary independent uh, increment. 
Uh, I won't prove this, uh, but I will give you since we only have several uh, minutes. So I just uh, give you a very, very uh, good example, right? Talking about, so which is the application of a stroke problem. Uh, I will skip most of them. So in time, you please read that and see if you have more problems based on uh, the first full section you need to read uh, and list a uh, uh, real part of that. Uh, so I, I want to talk about the reflection principle. Right? So the reflection principle. Uh, so what does it say? So, so using this principle, you can compute the distribution of the heating time, right? So you can compute the distribution of this. Uh, I, I put all the computation in these notes. I will share with you um, uh, and just uh, explain the reflection principle maybe in two minutes. So Ti is the heating time of the point A, right? So, uh, so then we can just get a motion, right? It's a motion starting from zero, right? Zero means we starting from zero, right? Uh, so, so we can just have right T A the is less than T, right? You hit a uh, point A uh, before time T. So before time T is just uh, equals to B zero B T is bigger than A. Right. And so of, of course, right, if B T is bigger than A, right? Of course this happens, right? And what this tells you is that, okay, you just uh, compute P0, PT bigger than A times two, you give you the probability, right? That's uh, very surprising, right? That's very surprising. But uh, if you recall what we did, right, in the Markov chain, uh, we have similar result, right? And there, right, since it's discrete, right, so here is now equal to, but, it, but in our case, it's continuous, right? So it's just equal. So you think of a thing uh, for a while, why here is equal, and previously the reflection principle for general, maybe random work is not equal, right? So it's previously, right? So this is like a less than or equal to, but now we have equal. Okay. So let, let me just explain uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the remaining five minutes. Okay. So we're starting from zero, right? This is not a really good uh, graph, but uh, it explains uh, what uh, we have, right? So, okay, so let's assume uh, the Brownian motion hits, hits the point A, here is A, let's say hits A and time T, right? So by strong Markov property, right? By strong Markov property, right? Intuitively, what does this mean, right? It means, right, once you hit this point A, right? So pass really doesn't matter, right? So that means, right? So B, so this new part or this new increment, so, so it's tenant, what do you happen before TA? This is a strong mark of, right? So strong mark of process trajectory wise, right? So this is a trajectory wise. It's independent of what do you happen before TA. Once you reach uh, reach A, once you reach this point A, right, the oil piston doesn't matter. Okay, so, so what we have, right? So once you reach this point A, uh, it's a brown motion starting from A, right? So this is just starting B zero equals to A, right? And uh, we want to say, right? So either it, it has one half probability going be, be above A, it has one half probability going below A, uh, right? Because it's just a, a normal distribution, right? It's symmetric. Okay, so we can compute this very easily, right? So given T A less than T, so T bigger than A, so has one half probability. So given this, so this should have one half probability, right? So that's why we get this. So you can write like this, right? So B uh, zero T A less than T, right? Given T bigger than A, so given, given T A less than T, right? So this conditional probability is the one half, just one half. So that's why we get this, okay? 
Okay, so actually from this term, we can conclude by y. It's just one observation. Right? So this is what we get. This is what we get. So then we just rewrite, right? We just take this to them, right? Time, right? so this is two, right? This is two here, right? So we just multiply two on both sides. Right? And uh, what uh, interesting is this, right? So as long as bt be a, so this, so because bt big than a is containing this set, right? bt big than a is smaller. Right? So if bt is big than a, right? So you must visit a before time t, right? So because the, the path is continuous, right? So if bt is big than a here, I right, must uh, visit the zero before, right? Before a, right? So that's uh, called the uh, re reflection principle, right? Reflection principle. Uh, so you, you can use this uh, to do a lot of computations. You can use this to do a lot of computations. So one example, right? So one example is the following, right? So we can compute distribution of the heating time, right? So Ti is the heating time, right? Is the heating time uh, Bd equals to A? We can compute that, right? So T A less than T we just the two times B T equal than or equal to A, right? We can compute this. So we can compute this uh, using the density function of normal distribution, right? So we can compute T A, right? Uh, so this is the distribution, the commu cumulative distribution function of T A, right? And also we can we can show we can get the oxide law of Brown emotion. So what is Arkheim law, right? So we didn't talk about Arkheim law for random work, but uh, Arkheim law of Brown emotion actually is the scaling limit of the Arkheim law of random words. So this is L, right? L is a random variable, which is the last time uh, BT visited zero, right? So this is the last visit. So this is the last visit to zero uh, before time one. For time one, so we can compute the the distribution of L uh, using uh, this observation. Right? So this is your uh, x size, right? So I mean, you just can. It's very easy. Right? But uh, what what you only need to do is write this in a mathematical way. Right? So intuitively, this is a very easy observation. Right? So if L is bigger than t, what does this mean? So right? just get all possible values at time t y. Right? So then from this time t, you never go back to zero, right? You never go back to zero. So then you just model this together, right? You can compute distribution of the last visit to zero of Brown emotion. We just look at the time between zero and one. Okay, so so in the end, we can give arc time. It's given by arc sign. Uh, excuse me, that's a, that, uh, I just want to, okay, this is two, right, this is two, okay. Uh, maybe I made some typos, but uh, it should be true. Okay, so in the end, all right, so we get the arc sign law, right, so get the arc sign law, um, last visit uh, before, right, so this is the density function, this is the density function, so if you look at the density function, uh, so this is p0 l s s. So what does this mean, right? This actually means the density function is symmetric about one half, right? So s uh, s actually between zero and one. So this is the density function. So the density function is symmetric about one half. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's weird, right? So Right, because right, so you might think right. Uh, so it's more pro probable. So you 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 might think right, since uh, so this is the last visit to before one. You might uh, give more ways uh, after uh, give more ways uh, for the interval. Right, you might think it gives more ways on this uh, interval. Right, but actually it's not. Right, um, so actually the density is actually about uh, one half. So, yeah. So, uh, I I I made a little bit for this uh, a lot. Okay, first, a lot of the uh, theoretic uh, proof of random work. 
and I really uh, don't like to move a strong home. But the application side is more, more important. Uh, so I post uh, several homework that uh, probably will help you understand better. Uh, but uh, so so maybe it's better, right? It's better to you to go through this section first. Go through section uh, 4.7. Uh, uh, in very high, right? In very detail. Okay, so I, I, I only talk about the intuitive proof uh, about the uh, reflection print, just a one, uh, one very basic application, uh, one basic application of strong Markov property. Um, yeah, uh, I will stop here. And uh, a really good section 7.5 for next uh, lecture. Uh, I probably spend one lecture on materials and uh, one lecture on stochastic differential equations, the like Ito uh, formula. So, I mean, this course, uh, yeah, even I spend more time in the Markov or strong Markov property, right? It's just like checking, I mean, not very interested. Um, but pre please uh, spend some reading the text. Uh, uh, I already post the homework. Um, I try to do the homework, maybe it will help you understand better. Uh, I really did be fast for this lecture, uh, but uh, since we have one, right, so we only have two lectures, and I want to talk something about uh, uh, martingales and uh, stochastic differentials, right? Otherwise, you have a chance to learn about that uh, later, right? Because this is probably the only probability class uh, and the pen. Right? Okay, yeah, I will stop here. If you have questions, I can answer. Uh, otherwise, you can just uh, leave the meeting. So no questions? Okay. So Hang Jun, Ya Chong, and Shen, see only three of you. If you have no questions, I will just. Uh, uh, Sorry, I have a question, but we yeah, yeah, go ahead. Recording. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I start recording first. You want recorded or? No, thank you.